Hi students, welcome back to virtual learning, virtual school. Um, this is your start of the year video on how to take care of your iPad appropriately. We're just gonna run through some of the things that you already know, but just to be a bit of a reminder and a fresher, refresher at the start of the year. So number one, the case, I have a different case than you guys, a little bit different, but your case is really, really strong. We buy really good ones so that if you do drop it, most of the time, it'll be safe. I'm not encouraging you to drop it at all, but they are good, strong cases. So a splash of water or falling off a couch isn't, isn't gonna do a whole lot of damage. But we do need to make sure that we keep the cases on. So if you're ever traveling um, anywhere in your, or you're putting your iPad up on a shelf at the moment, we're not traveling so much, but if you're putting your iPad up on a shelf and you're not using it for the weekend or something like that, close it up, put the case on it so it's closed away. Um, when you're learning with it, you'll see that your case has a couple of different ways that you can make it stand up. So you can have it standing like this or standing like this by placing this into the outside case. And you want to make sure that you're getting really comfortable when you're doing virtual learning because if we're sitting in front of a screen for like quite a few hours most days, we need to be comfortable. So it could be that you're lying down flat on your stomach on the floor and you've got your, your um, screen pointing up to you or you could be sitting at a table and maybe you've got it this way but however you do it, use that little piece of the case so it's nice and comfortable and it fits good for you. Um, fits well. Next up, buttons. So for anyone who's not sure, there's only two buttons on your iPad. This one down the bottom, which is called the home button. Now pressing this will let me unlock my screen. It also close applications. If I double tap it, it'll open up all the applications I've been using lately and you'll see, ah, oh, I've got too many open right now and it's using up a bit of my battery. So I'm gonna swipe all of those up and use less battery. So the double tap of the home button is what does that. And if I'm in the middle of using an app, that one's not even open. If I'm in the middle of using an app, pressing my home button once, closes it. Cool. At the very top of your screen, or top of your iPad, you have a little button just up here, and that's the power button. Now, if I press that once, it locks my screen. If I hold that down, one, two, three, it says slide to power off. So if I slide across there, it'll now power my iPad off. Now, the good thing about iPads, you don't really need to power them off hardly ever. They go to sleep and they close down most of the things they're using. Um, but sometimes you'll find that like an application's not working or you're having some kind of problem with your iPad. The first step is to swipe up to close the application. And the second step is to power off the iPad. Just turn it off, wait five seconds, turn it back on. And a lot of the time that'll actually fix your problems without even needing to ask anyone else for help. Um, your charger, now I have a charger. The charger is so important now that we're doing virtual school. At normal school, we charge these up at night time so we come to school and it's fully charged and it's ready for our day. And you'll, some of you will know, if you're a teacher or a student, it's really annoying when you come to a lesson and you're gonna use your iPad and yours has 5% battery. Now that's even worse with virtual school because we're using it to be in the lesson for Zoom or to do our, complete our um, learning on Seesaw or whatever it might be. So definitely charge it up every single night. I just leave one of these chargers in my room, close to my bed, but wherever your iPad lives, and I just plug it in every night. So that the next morning it's fully charged, ready for my day of learning. Settings on your iPad. This little app right here. We set these settings up so that they're completely ready for how your iPad should be for learning. This is one area we ask you not to play around in. So you can go in here and have a look, but please don't go in and turn things off or change things unless you've been asked to by a teacher or someone that's gonna tell you how to make a specific change. Um, playing with your settings can cause your iPad to be a bit of a pain for you. One student came to me and said, my iPad's completely changed color, I don't know how to fix it. Another student said, my iPad's in Chinese, I don't know how to read anything, because they played around with settings and they changed things. Um, clean hands when using your iPads, please. Don't go straight from eating an ice cream to using your iPad, or even worse, eating an ice cream while on your iPad. Um, it makes the screen all gross and sticky and yucky. We don't want them to be like that, so not eating or drinking at the same time as using them. And then if we are eating or drinking, clean our hands before we come and use them. If you've got an iPad that's covered with sticky finger marks, it's gonna make it harder to see. It's gonna be a little bit gross to touch, and it's just not hygienic. So the way to clean that is very simple. A tissue or a paper towel will just rub off the dust, 
and if there's like stickiness things on there that won't just rub off with a tissue or a paper towel, because this isn't glass, this is a plastic screen cover, we can actually use a little bit of water on a tissue or a paper towel or a soft cloth. So wet a soft cloth, not like a cup of water, but damp a little bit, and just wipe it off and then dry it. Um, don't leave this on the floor, please. If you're learning on the floor, that's fine. But when you're finished, put it on a table if you're not using it, or a shelf, or on top of you know your bed, somewhere where it's going to be um, not stood on by brothers or sisters or parents. Um, not have a chair leg put on top of it. These kind of things have happened to our iPads, and when that happens, they do get broken. So the case is strong, but it won't protect it from someone really heavy stomping on it, or like a piece of furniture stomping on it. So don't leave them on the floor. Also don't leave them in the sun. If you have a window or a balcony that you're learning on and <clears throat> you're leaving this right in the sun, it will overheat and sometimes it will say, I'm too hot and you can't use me. I'm overheated. So don't leave it in the sun. Uh, we're all getting headphones this year. That's a cool new feature to virtu virtual school. So use your headphones. You'll see at the bottom, oh no, where's my one? Mine's at the very top, but I need to open a little compartment. So at the very top, yours will be the same. I need to open a little compartment to plug in my headphones there. Um, and as soon as they're plugged in, they should be, you should hear any, anything that's turned on. On the side, you have volume buttons. Can't really see them in the video, but just at the top on the side, there's volume for going up and down. Um, it's, there is a cover over that little hole. And that's there so that nothing gets stuck inside that hole. Sometimes kids say, my headphones aren't working. And when we look inside, something small is stuck inside there. So normally you can like blow it out shake it out but just keep it closed okay almost finished your ipad will fill up very quickly if you take a million selfies of you and your dog every day especially videos so try to limit the amount of uh, puppy videos you take and selfies and when you get too many you need to go in and delete them because otherwise you won't have room for the things that you're actually creating for learning now if you are third grade or above you have google drive on your ipad and that's a place that you can send those photos so they don't take up the room on your iPad. Um, last few things. We normally talk about going into someone else's iPad. It's not so important with virtual school unless it's a brother or sister, but your iPad is your own. So no one else should go into it without your permission and you shouldn't go into anyone else's without their permission. It's like going into someone's pencil case with their bag. It's just not okay. Um, we will be updating and putting on different apps and doing certain things all remotely, all wirelessly. So sometimes your parents might get an email from school saying, please make sure the iPad's on the internet this weekend because we're going to do updates. And you'll see that it'll just happen. It might take a few minutes. You might not even notice it, but the next time you go to use it, there might be a couple of new applications on there. So that kind of stuff will just happen every now and again. And the last point is, there's a big difference between creating on your iPad and consuming on your iPad. Creating is when you like make a cool post on Seesaw or you turn your photos into a cool video using iMovie. You're creating something for other people. You're using um, your brain in a creative way to make something really cool. Using technology, using your iPad. Consuming is when you're looking at stuff other people have been created. So sitting for like an hour looking at YouTube videos, that's consuming. And that side of doing that kind of thing is not using your brain at all in a creative way. So it's really important that we always think about having a nice balance. If you're always consuming and never creating, then you're not helping yourself become a better technology user. So the goal is to be creating more than we consume. And that's all the rules. Good luck, have a great year of virtual, well, start of the year of virtual school, because we're gonna see you in real school very soon, we're hoping. All right, cheers everybody.